Welcome to the Housing Commission, February 7th, 2024, Regular Housing Commission meeting. This is a hybrid meeting with Housing Commission members, CD staff, and members of the public participating in the Oak Conference Room by, and via Zoom. I will now call the meeting to order at 7.36 p.m. I would like to introduce the staff and Housing Commission members present. Housing Manager Tim Wong, Management Analyst Adam Patterson, and Senator Chris Turner. Commissioner, we're called right now. Commissioner, Commissioner Campbell. Commissioner Leach. Here. Commissioner Merriman. Chair Alabama. I'm here. Commissioner Primaco. Here. Commissioner Patillo. And Vice Chair Walker. Here. Tim, would you please provide instruction to the House Commission and members of the public and how the meeting will proceed? Sorry, I didn't speak very fast. Thank you, Chair Onap and members of the House Commission. Welcome everyone to the February 7th meeting of the Housing Commission. And thank you for attending. Staff will engage cameras and microphones to make presentations and respond to the members of the Housing Commission. For members of the public who are in attendance, in attendance and wish to provide public comment on an item on tonight's agenda after the chair calls for public comment on an item you wish to speak on. For virtual participants, please engage the raise hand feature on, at the bottom of your screen. For those who are calling in from a landline or cell phone, please press star nine for those in person. Please complete, complete a speaker card and bring it to staff's desk. And that concludes the instructions, and I return the meeting to you, Chair. Thank you. Under public comment, the public may address the Housing Commission on any subject not listed on the agenda. Each speaker may address the Housing Commission once under public comment for a limit of three minutes. You're not required to provide your name to the city, your name or city of residence, but it is helpful. The Housing Commission cannot act on items not listed on the agenda, and therefore, the Housing Commission cannot respond to non agenda issues brought up on the public comment other than to provide general information. Tim, do we have any public comment? No public comment. Under regular business, the Housing Commission received information or presentation in addition to considering policy matters and administrative actions. First, we have, have item D1 to approve the Housing Commission meeting minutes for October 4th, 27, 23, and January 18, 2024. Are there any clarifying questions from the Housing Commission on item D1? <laughs> this item is now open for public comment. Tim, do we have any public comment? No. Let's <laughs> move to approve the minutes. Second. Okay. Great. <laughs> Uh, no. Roll call vote, Commissioner Campos. Absent, Commissioner Leach. Aye. Commissioner Merriman, absent. Chair Onap. Aye. Commissioner Pimentel. Aye. Commissioner Portillo, absent. Vice Chair Walker. Aye. The motion passes. So next we have item D2 to consider and make recommendation to the planning commission to approve the below market rate housing agreement with Farzad Gafari for 1220 Hoover Street, senior planner Chris Turner to introduce the item and provide presentation. Thank you, Commissioner. That was thoughtful. Um, just a slide. We have a pretty good overview of the projects and a couple of the key points of the draft agreement. Made a little bit of the project. So this is uh, 1220 Hoover Street. Uh, so the project is located on Hoover Street in the R3 district around downtown. Um, subject to the R3 infill regulations, which allow for um, additional density and floor area, uh, floor area ratio and height, uh, depending upon the provided density. Um, so the project is proposing 12 to 8 units, 7 units of uh, base density, and then an additional uh, bonus unit under the state of the bonus law. Um, it would be comprised of three one-bedroom units, three two-bedroom units, and two three-bedroom units. 
And then the applicant is also requesting a new subdivision of um, a project to um, create some kind of in students slide. So as far as the uh, the eligibility for this project, residential projects, we have five more units are required to um, provide BMR. Um, applicants are required to demonstrate compliance with BMR ordinance and the BMR guidelines. Um, so for projects less than 20 units, um, applicants are required to provide 10% of those units at uh, low market rates. Um, and then for the further than the BMR guidelines, developments uh, between five and nine units where 10% is a fraction, um, preferences to provide one on site BMR unit. So, as far as the applicant's proposal goes, um, they do provide a uh, proposal provide one unit on site, uh, it will be a two bedroom unit located on the second floor. Uh, this is the second floor floor plan. It's corner unit um, circle below. Um, and then they do propose to initially rent all of the units and then they sell at a later date. Um, the BMR unit would be rented at a low income um, and then sold at a higher unit. That uh, we have level, which we need to a little bit on the next slide. So the proposed BMR agreement, um, some of the highlights, uh, the applicant would be required to treat all of the units the same. Um, so for example, in this initial rental period, all, all the units would be held uh, by the applicant and rented. And once they decide they would like to sell the units, all of the units would have to be um, listed for sale um, just to make sure that the VMR unit is market rate units. Uh, during the initial rental period, the two bedroom unit would be offered uh, to residents earning maximum 80% AMI. Area median income, uh, which is a low income bracket. Um, and then when they decide to sell the units, the units would be, the BMR unit would be offered to uh, residents for a maximum of 120% AMI, which is the moderate uh, income bracket. Um, in order to um, not displace uh, an existing BMR tenant, um, that tenant would have the right of first refusal to purchase the unit uh, when it's offered for sale. Um, and then if they decline to purchase the unit, they would be allowed to stay uh, under their current lease terms. So um, BMR guidelines uh, require um, generally that the, the BMR unit be consistent with the rest of the um, units in the development. So for this development, it would be indistinguishable from the exterior. Um, it is all one large building. Um, so the unit would be the second floor corner unit circle there. Um, you can see you can't tell the difference between the unit and the other units. Um, and then it would be generally the same proportion of sizes as, as the other units. Um, Generally consistent with the size of two, uh, two um, which are larger than all of the one bedroom units, um, and they're obviously smaller than the three bedroom units. Um, but generally consistent with um, the overall scale of development. Um, so at this point, we recommend that the Housing Commission recommend approval of the draft agreement to the Planning Commission. Um, and then the next steps for this project would be um, once the application is deemed complete, we move to the planning commission for approval of the use permit and architectural control, and then to city council for um, action on the uh, major subdivision. And with that, I am going to take questions. Applicants uh, are also here to answer any questions. So this item is now open for public comment. Tim, do we have any public comments? We do not. No. 
who does not have any public comment. Okay, so if we had any open for having to make sure we find questions for the session. I have a question about, um, I mean, first of all, I, I, I love that this is uh, the downtown area. You know, it's one of the, where we're hoping to get more of the MR units um, in the downtown area and closer to public transportation. So that, that's very good to see. Um, just had a couple of questions about um, the transition from uh, renting at a low income to selling at a moderate income. Um, is there any idea how long was the time frame that they would be renting for? No. Yeah, it's it's really based on interest rates and market factors. Um, this is something we had we had originally in mind that it would be a, a different interest rate environment, and we would sell them early on. But given how things have changed, we're really dependent on what we have as our main. Um. So, um, so it's not really clear how long, the, what sort of um, stability the person who would be renting at a low income would have. Well, I mean, they would have the stability, right? Because they, they they have the first right of refusal, and they they don't want to they would continue leasing at the same time. So, okay. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I think the other uh, provision is that the tenant is not going to have their tenancy terminated as a result of offering the unit for sale. So when that tenancy terminates naturally, then that you know really offered for sale because that was a key component. Because we recognize that the tenants have a low income rate, so they may not be able to afford a moderate income unit. So we did want the uh, agreement that we have negotiated to result in the eviction of a low income tenant. Yeah, it would be, uh, if I could add, just a voluntary yeah, move out. Yeah, it would not be evicted as the applicant has stated. So okay. it'd be of the tenant's choosing. Uh, and do we, what the uh, moderate income um, is 120% of um, AMI. I, I have some big idea what that. Do we have some kind of a, an idea for what that would go? I'm just asking, I'm just curious. For you said moderate? Yes. Moderate income. Um, I can bring that up in the bar. For sale. So for sale. All apart. And uh, for the BMR guidelines, how the calculation is, there's a assumed household size, and this is a two bedroom. So we would use a two, uh, two person household would be uh, the in, uh, maximum income if, or the income used to calculate the um, the BMR price. And that's dependent on the, uh, and the BMR price is dependent on interest rates, the HOA, and uh, some additional housing costs such as insurance, uh, property taxes, but um, at that time, but uh, for San Mateo County, for two person, uh, moderate income for a two person household is 168,000. Right. So based on that income, uh, dependent on what the interest rates are, uh, what, the, what the applicant has determined to be the HOA, we would take those into, factor, uh, into factoring the BMR sales price. Okay. But why are we setting it at the moderate level and not at a lower level? Uh, my question is that there are more people, low income people make less than 160,000. Those are the people who need more rentals or more houses than the people who are moderate income. That's what I'm saying. Why, why are we determining that we're gonna, that, that it's gonna be sold at the moderate level, the AMI level, and not at the lower level? Yeah, so the guidelines, um, they're not even the set of requirements for what income level projects have, mm -hmm. have to achieve. Um, general rental projects um, is to sort of average out of the low income, but for sale units are allowed to, uh, to be at that moderate rate, uh, but 120 AMI. Uh, 
So as far as consistency with guidelines in, in these requirements, um, this proposal is is consistent with the city's uh, BMR guidelines or um, city's requirements for BMR um, ownership. Maybe we can we can later revisit that timeline because I think. It's we set to set that rate at that level would allow people to make a lot more money to live there and the low income, even though they they make below that level, they will not be able to go for people. Well, it's good to address understood. Um, and a housing element program is to review the BMR guidelines. Um, we're looking at BMR rentals, the percentages for BMR ownership the percentages and, and the affordability levels. So those are some things that are in uh, the, the department's work plan for the upcoming year. So um, whether it's ownership for low or moderate income, those will be um, considered or reviewed in this upcoming year. So this we're looking what we're looking at here is like something that adheres to the guidelines that as they are written right now. That's that's the um what that's what we're deciding. Correct. So this we're... proposal is consistent with the approved BMR guidelines. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any more questions from the House Information? No? Okay. <laughs> All right, then do we have a motion and second for the state? <laughs> Yeah, second. Commissioner Leach. Aye. Commissioner Merriman. Absent. Chair on that. Aye. Commissioner Benetton. Uh, aye. Commissioner Portillo. Absent. Vice Chair Walker. Aye. Motion passes. Four zero. Okay. Do we have any individual commissioner updates? One more? Okay. Do we have any recommendations for future agenda items? I have staff who provide staff updates and announcements. Um, in the March meeting, uh, the Planning Commission will be reviewing our annual housing element, uh, our annual housing element performance report just how the city has performed based on its housing element policies and unit production. And another is um, in speaking with the chair, if the commission would like, we can uh, talk more about uh, the city's BLR program, where we are with units, both ownership and rental, and uh, where the BMR uh, Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Program is Thank you. Thank you. That will be a future agenda item. Maybe not for March yeah. or April, but um, May uh, and sometime in the future. Yeah, for an update on the city's BMR program. But uh, an idea of what the city will be doing for the housing element. And how that they potentially impact the BMR program. Yeah. So uh, we'll give you an update uh, either March or April or May, whenever uh, we can talk to the chair to see when the appropriate time for the agenda will be. Can I ask a question here? Is that sure. Yeah. Um, I understand March 2nd, the city is meeting to prioritize the, or I guess reconfigure the priorities for the housing. Uh, is that a formal thing? Is that an question? I'm building seven units. And uh, yeah. this one bedroom, yeah, as I add one sorry. bedroom. I'm sorry, sorry. can we finish our public meeting and then you're welcome? Yeah, I'll be welcome. Uh, 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 right uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, on, on, on March 2nd, do I have that date correct? Yeah, on March 2nd, uh, from 10 to 2, the city council is having their uh, goal priority setting meeting. And so um, 
the current council goals are housing, economic resiliency, uh, sustainability, and there's one more, sorry. Uh -huh. so, and so on March 2nd, they'll act, uh, the council will be considering uh, are these the same prior goals that we want or do we have other things? And so uh, housing typically is a goal for the council, um, but um, we'll see what they say uh, in March. Probably is is my guess, but um, so from, that's March second to Saturday. Yeah, March second at the city council. I can I I'll be more than happy. It's an open meeting, so um, be more than happy to send the commission detail the meeting details, and if there's and associated staff report. I don't know if there is, but yes, I, I believe that's the meeting you're referring to, the goal setting. Um, Will that be brought to May's meeting? Uh, we can report back of what the council has decided okay. in the April meeting, if you like. Okay. Um, actually, we could probably report back at the March 6th meeting Oh, um, yes, since it's right. March 2nd, staff will be more than happy to, to report out what the council has decided for their goals for 2024. All right. Yeah. Thank you for thinking right. Sure. Okay. Any more questions? I have a question. I, congratulations on completing the housing element. I know that was a massive. Oh, there, wow, a I thousand was, pages. I was, <laughs> the tone. <laughs> I was really excited to see that the uh, concept of downtown uh, high density housing was included. And we've asked the commission's asked a few times, can we do an RFP or an RFI, a solicitation to the marketplace? in which we could invite developers, like these creative people, to come propose projects to build on our publicly owned parking lots, as much affordable housing as they can possibly build, with the enticement or encouragement, I guess, to say that the city may be willing to waive things like height restrictions and parking densities and other things that frustrate developers from building uh, projects that pencil out. What is the status of that request and how can the housing, well, I don't want to speak on behalf of the housing commission, but how can we encourage the staff and the city council to move aggressively in that uh, process? Um, that's a great question. It is a housing minutes reflect that whole thing and you guys write it up and it's like the housing commission really wants to push on this and we're asking the help of the city staff and the city council to consider this RFI process, right? Uh, RFP process. It is, and um, and by the way, maybe the minutes would, if my fellow commissioners agree, my fellow commissioners might say, that's a great idea, John, put my name on that comment in the minutes. And then we don't have to vote on anything, but the minutes would say, Commissioners all seem to agree yes, that that's a good idea yeah. and it's not just a film and tell option. Well, no. But if you disagree, no, that's I fine disagree. too. I, you don't think, I like the idea up. of getting some concrete information and um, getting a feel for, you know, could we get, in, in my brief time on the Housing Commission, it seems like it can be really hard to get these things up off the ground, <laughs> you know. I will say, you know, developing on city parking lots is a uh, complex uh, process, and it is a complex project. But um, I just to reiterate, um, at the last housing commission meeting, I think the parking lots were also asked, and what the process is. Um, it's outlined in the housing element in that a feasibility study will first be commissioned or prepared, and then either an RFI or an RFP will be issued as part of it. And um, through that process, any developer is more than welcome to propose a an affordable housing development. And I also understand I can I can confirm this, but it's it is. 
um, in the interest of the council also. I mean, there are numerous housing element programs, but this is one, uh, I believe one of, of the more significant programs in the housing element. So, uh, and as, as mentioned at the last meeting, there are approximately 65 programs that need to be implemented in the next few years. And so, uh, community development, or the city, I should say, is, is looking at how to best um, approach each of those programs, but understanding that development of city-owned parking lots is a high priority, and, and, and they're great interest, housing commission, council, so uh, any updates I get, I'd be happy to, with more details, not updates, Mom. additional details about the timing as we we um, work through these programs and how to address and not implement them. Um, certainly be happy to provide any of additional details <laughs> at this point. Thank you, Tim. Sure. May I suggest that the, the Housing Commission consider writing a letter to the city council saying we your appointed housing commissioners really encourage you to do an rfp or some other similar process that won't take a lot of city staff time putting it out to the market and see what developers will propose in terms of high density downtown affordable housing what i just heard from staff is we got a whole lot of stuff to do and we're going to get to that and if we want to have our voice, voice heard as a housing commission, I'd recommend we take extra steps. If you guys were willing, we could have staff write that letter, or I'd take the first crack at it, and we can send it around to, to um, you all. And then if we want to sign it, those on the commission could sign it. Those who don't agree with the initiative don't need to. I have a question to that. Um, with generating a letter, um, for the city, um, for the market to propose what's best for the downtown projects. Is there a way to ensure, because I know that there is um, revisions that we're looking at doing for the BMR policy, is there a way to kind of request that a higher percentage of BMR be sure. included in any project that goes up, or does the revision need to come first before we propose that in a letter? Our letter, I think, would just be all that we are is a recommending body. Okay. We have no power and no authority to do anything. Okay. So if we recommend, as we did in the preparation for the housing element, let's really focus on downtown Tim. <laughs> The challenge that the city staff has is there's only so many city staff and they have a lot of work to do. And so this initiative will, is may never happen. And the city staff, is, the way they look at it, if I'm understanding correctly, they see this as being a very intensive process that's going to take a lot of work for city staff. So we might not be able to allocate the resources to this idea. So I guess I'm suggesting that whatever we want to put in our letter it's not really we're not making policy we don't need to get approval from anybody whatever we want to put in our letter is the housing commission to say hey city council wake up let's do this allocate the resources it's more important than maybe other ways you're thinking about you know getting one extra unit in this project over here or whatever like let's go build a thousand units downtown or a hundred units downtown <laughs> and that um, could be a policy statement a recommendation that we're making that might have might be heard and it also might be completely unheard so in the letter that we send we could say the rfp you know we recommend your housing commission recommends that the rfp do things like consider i don't know what you call it additional incentives or allocations to the developers who put in more a higher ratio of bmr units no for me my understanding is that the I have made them wrong that the talking about the program is only for to 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 clear the state uh, mandate of how many you know how housing we should provide to all levels and that is not that means that it's not for the it's not this is not in in 
within the normal group where you know 10% go to BMR. This is for for that purpose only. That is why we allocated the parking lot for that. So we are not saying, okay, developer, give us more. There's nothing like that. We just hire developer to to you know to give us like an architectural type um design to to maximize the number of housing we need to clear the state mandate for the city of Melbourne. So 2000, 800 to 2700. Uh, uh, Clara, yeah. well, um, it, it's it's a couple things. Um, yes, the city has to show we have sufficient sites to meet our arena of approximately three thousand units. As part of that, we said that these parking lots will yield three hundred forty five units uh, to meet that mandate. However, that's for projections. So yes, you're correct in that sense in that um, yeah, this is these parking lots and the 345 units at a specific density will help meet that to show the state that's how we can meet the, the mandate. But on the other side is there is great interest to produce these units and that the 345 is a projection, but it's not a cap, it's not a maximum. Exactly. And so it, I, I want based to... on, on what developers come in, what pencils out, it could exceed that 345. But what we said this from the state is it'll yield at least 345 units. Mm -hmm. And um and since it is a program in the housing element, this housing element is a contract with the state saying, we will do these things. You you have got it. Tim, we've been talking about it since I've been on the commission. So we can keep talking about it or we can start doing something about but, it. And but, what I'm suggesting simply is mm -hmm. not to defend 345 or attack 345. 345 is a number that got a lot of thoughtful staff work that went into that and said 345 would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. We also could consider, or the city council could consider, building a larger building or a denser building or a wider building or taking all eight downtown parking lots and they could build a lot more than 345. So mm -hmm. I don't want to, I recognize that the city has a certain machinery that it has to work through and the housing element is all the things you just said. And like, I, like as I said before, it's a tremendous level of work. I can only imagine what you guys must have gone through to get that thing done. But what we're suggesting, and I don't mean to, I'm not presuming to speak on behalf of my commission, all the commissioners, but we've talked about it enough. I think that I think we're all in agreement that if we can encourage the city council mm -hmm. to allocate the resources to do an RFP, which doesn't take much staff time at all, the RFP goes out to the marketplace and developers come from all over the world to say, I will build affordable housing in downtown Menlo Park if you give me a break on the cost of the land by using your city on parking lots. In order for me to make a project pencil out, it'll need to have this many units. And it might have enough BMR, and it might not have enough BMR, it might be 100% BMR. What I'm trying to get the city to do is not over-program and over-manage, but to simply send out a request to the marketplace. There's a whole lot of creative, wealthy, uh, uh, capable developers and invite them to compose. If we were to put these parking lots in play, what can you do to maximize our affordable housing and housing stock overall and be creative? That That's, I, I keep asking the same question. I keep getting back, well, it's going to be managed this way or there's a height limit there or you know, we got to manage that process through the through the um, housing element, and those are all true. I'm just asking for something a little different and maybe a little more, which is a letter from the housing commission to the city council saying this is a priority, and we're recommending you guys move this fast. I, I think it's why are you waiting for something to approve through the record process? We can start this part of it. Well. Just to see if maybe developers might have ideas that would also help with that process as well. You know, like 
maybe we should like that the height and all this stuff. I mean, I, I don't know all that coming in with the planning, right? So I'm just thinking that it is a you know it is a very you know feasible idea. I think to move forward with that. Yes, um, I had a question about the um, is there is the feasibility study a requirement to get it built, or are we just trying to make sure that we have um, a full picture, a, full, a good idea of what the picture is in no. getting the housing? It, it's the latter. Uh, it's not the former. It's, okay. it's to better position for the RFP to be maybe a little more precise about the RFP. Um, what I, could be feasible I, on, on the sites? Yeah, I, I think the whole point is let's not be precise about the RFP. Let's let developers come propose stuff and see what they bring. If we say build this many units, the, paint them this color, make them this size, make this many affordable and that many unaffordable or market rate, then the developers will be discouraged from bringing creative ideas. So the whole concept of feasibility study takes a ton of staff time, takes a ton of planning. You're going to have to hire some consultant to write it. You're going to pay them hundreds of thousands of dollars to do it. Let's just put out an RFP city and see what the market, and then you can give the pile of ideas that come from developers to your consultant that you're gonna pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to to write the feasibility study and let them sort out what's not. If you start with a feasibility study, of course you're gonna create a bunch of staff work for yourselves to do. And maybe limitation that maybe not necessary that could be changed. And then you have to go back and redo the feasibility again. Commissioner Walker had a great point, though, which is if we could in this letter include something that says, hey, we're going to give extra consider, we're really encouraging developers to do a maximum number of uh, VMR units, that's a signal to the market to say, oh, well, I'll do 50% I'll do VMR units, but I need a six-story building to make that pencil up. We don't need to tell the developer how to make their project pencil out, they'll tell us. Then that's my suggestion. And that way we might get more VMR. Well, to your point, if, if you kind of cast your net, you can then probably find the best out of what the market is. I guess it makes the study easier. I don't know. I'm for it. <laughs> Understanding that, yeah, I, I think I understand the Housing Commission sentiments Sooner than later, let the market forces dictate what the possibilities are and proceed the feasibility study with the open market request. That's really the root of that thing. I'm sorry, proceed. If you're going to do a feasibility study, don't start with a feasibility study. Do that second. Instead, do the RFP, which is come one, come all, build something in our downtown. And then that, okay. can, so that can be the feasibility study. So I'm sorry, kind of can... change the procedure. Yeah, because it, right. it is feasibility. Okay, all right. And if you would, if staff would be kind enough to write a first draft of that letter so that we put it in the context with all the right references and stuff, um, I, I'd be happy to help the, or take the lead on the commission to. I think that's a good idea because, yeah. like you said, we're, we're a recommending body, you know, so we can be. We can be bold in our recommendations and kind of um, move the needle more towards, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we can we 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 can be more more bold. We're not we're not uh, we're not elected officials, you know. So <laughs> no one's so, paying us. We can. <laughs> okay, I, I think I have the sentiment of the housing commission. Yeah, I can. I can. When could that be done, or is that something that has to be like discussed for ever? I think we're discussing. It. No, it, it, next week. It, yeah, yeah, it's not really an so agendized item, but but it, it's. I, 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 I understand I, your sentiment. I don't think there's a rule that we cannot just by ourselves as you know, Generally, just by then. just we can't just write a letter. We don't need. To have anybody to mention to write a letter. Yes. Would it help you if, if we um, if we could came up with a draft and you could um, put it in the right? Well, 
format or would it help you to do it? I think it would be good in, in the commission's words and, and I can take the block. Yeah, okay. That's awesome. Okay. That was it. We all good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you want to uh, yeah, do that? I'm comfortable with that. Okay. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. I don't even know what's going on. What? John, did you want to take the first crack, or did you want? Um... I will volunteer to do it, and then I will never get around to it. So, if you want to, okay, I'll take the crack. Take a crack at it, and I then will... I'll. So I got into trouble before because it was. I sent it. If I sent it to all of us, am I creating a? A false form or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Send it to staff. Okay, I'll send it to you. As you can say, this is heavy. But I'll send it to you. Send it to staff. I'll send it just to you. What I do the draft, if you want to take a look. No, no, send it to staff because if he sends it to other commissioners, it becomes a serious. If there's only two of us talking about it, and it's not, it doesn't become a Brown Act violation. So. If you want, I can look at it, but I guess I would encourage you to send it to staff because if I just send it to staff and then they will send it back. Okay, I'll do that. I yes, understand it and it's great to have it. But yeah, just perfect. That's good. Yeah. We okay? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to adjourn the meeting now at 8 17. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.